This is a production of PBS Charlotte. Just ahead on Carolina Impact. Soda gets a bad rap for its high sugar content, but it's not the only beverage to look out for. Coming up, some tips to look out for hidden sugars. Plus, a summer camp that offers kids a chance to get away from the realities of living with cancer. And a local fashion designer whose high-end collections have debuted on international runways. Don't go anywhere. Carolina Impact starts right now. Carolina Impact, covering the issues, people, and places that impact you. This is Carolina Impact. Good evening. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Amy Burkett. I don't know about you, but I'm guilty of reaching for a sweet treat on a stressful day. While there's nothing wrong with a little sugar on our diets, the challenge is it's hidden in so many foods that we don't even know about, often disguised on nutrition labels with 61 different names like sucrose or high fructose corn syrup. That may be one reason why Americans eat nearly twice the recommended amount of sugar each day, and I know I'm probably guilty too. Carolina Impact's Danielle Koser shows us some ways to retrain our taste buds and cut back on that sweet stuff. Some not so sweet news about sugar. Data shows Americans are eating too much of it. I think they're alarmed to see how many grams of sugar are actually in products. Sugar is hard to avoid, sneaking into some of our favorite treats and go-to snacks, like nutrition bars and yogurt. Some are just as bad as ice cream, really. Too much sweet stuff can lead to serious consequences. We're not utilizing all the sugar that we eat, that's where it leads to weight gain and obesity. A registered dietitian, Michelle Ray spends most of her day talking about food, teaching others the importance of loading up on the good stuff, lean proteins and veggies, and limiting things like fat, sodium, and sugar. They just never think about it, and they don't know how the amount of sugar they intake impacts their health. And she said, how about sodas? How many sodas do you drink? And I said, oh, maybe one or two. And on the way home in the car, my husband said, you lied, you drink eight. And he was right, I probably drink eight sodas a day. Yup, you heard that right. Eight sodas a day used to be the norm for Terry Coops. That changed when she learned one can of regular soda contains more sugar than she should eat in an entire day. So that was a real, you know, s smack in your face, Terry. This is reality. New federal dietary guidelines state no more than 10% of your daily calories should come from added sugars. Here's an easy way to calculate your added sugar budget. First, determine your total daily calories, then divide that number by 10. For a person on a 2,000 calorie diet, that's about 200 calories a day from added sugars. Divide that number by four to translate calories to grams. In a 2,000 calorie intake, you can have 50 grams of sugar a day. Divide by four again to convert grams to teaspoons. 50 grams of sugar equals about 12 teaspoons. Most people have an added sugar budget between six and 15 teaspoons a day, but data shows Americans eat about 20 teaspoons of sugar a day. I don't want people to fear sugar. You've just got to eat it in moderation. Natural sugars, the kind that already exist in your food, don't count toward your daily added sugar budget. Natural sugars come from fruit, veggies, milk, and plain yogurt. Here's the catch. Labels only show total sugar, added and natural. That's why it's important to read labels and recognize which key words are code for added sugars, like corn syrup, evaporated cane juice, and molasses. Yogurt, cereals, and canned goods often contain added sugars. Everyone needs to read labels so that you know how many grams of sugar you're eating every day. Kube started changing her diet, swapping out sodas for water and finding ways to eat more vegetables. I've learned to hide kale in salads and things like that. She also makes it a priority to hit the gym a few times each week. I sleep much better. I have a lot more energy. I want that red velvet. I want that sugar sweet. From the gym to the great outdoors, this is Tony Martin's happy place. I have lots of energy, so when I get off of work, I go walking. He used to be overweight, suffering from knee pain, high blood pressure, and high cholesterol. We're trying to push his cholesterol medications even higher and higher, and yet it was not improving. So we finally kind of said, listen, you have to 
invest in this yourself. You have to make some changes with the way you eat and the way you exercise. From then on, I said I got to do something. So I uh, started watching what I eat, started exercising. One of Dr. Elena Ebay's recommendations, cut back on sugar. Eventually, Martin lost 25 pounds by changing his diet and exercising. He's kept it off for three years. When I actually see him make a change, that to me is like success. I really can tell when I get up in the mornings, you know, my body is just feel good. Ray offers three quick tips to help break sugar cravings. One, fill up on water instead of sports drinks. Two, try a bite-sized piece of dark chocolate if you're craving something sweet. Three, have a piece of fruit with a glass of water when you'd normally reach for dessert. We should stick to desserts no more than twice a week if we're at our kind of healthy ideal weight. Um, if we're not, we might not be able to afford it as often. I want my grandkids to know their grandma, so that's become important. That's why you get up and come here. That's why you check labels. That's why you do what you do. Remember, when it comes to your diet, it all starts with you. And big changes can mean big rewards. For Coobs, it's the hope that a healthier her means more time with the grandkids. For Carolina Impact, I'm Danielle Koser reporting. Thanks, Danielle. Changes coming to nutrition labels will make it easier to spot added sugars. Now, starting in 2018, the Food and Drug Administration will require food producers to include the amount of added sugars on products labels. Joining me now is Kimberly Spatola, a registered dietitian with Novant Health's Bariatric Solutions, to talk more about why we need to decrease the amount of sugar in our diet. Kimberly, thanks so much for your time. We appreciate it. Well, thank you for having me. So I confess to being a fan of sugar, although I am trying very hard as I hit that interesting middle age range where what I used to eat and not add pounds these days are packing on the pounds. So I've got to find the hidden sugars everywhere and I'm so glad that you brought some nice little treats to help us with. Let's start with a misconception. I thought granola was healthy. Yes, and that is one item that a lot of people add to their breakfast um, because they perceive it to be a very healthy item um, with the oats, with the silvered almonds that can have a lot of times. However, there's also can be a lot of honey, maple syrup, molasses, corn syrup even that can that's used to kind of combine it all together and make it really that sweet, crunchy flavor um, that you love from granola. Um, and with that, a lot of calories can be contained in a very small portion size. Yogurt, another breakfast staple for so many of us and we think it's healthy. Yes, especially when you go adding your granola on top of your yogurt, um, any type of yogurt, whether it be regular or even the Greek yogurt, um, it can definitely have a lot of hidden sources of sugar with fruit juice concentrate, more sugar added with from not only the fruits that are contained in it. Um, some brands of yogurt will actually have um, more sugar in it than the same serving size as a regular soda can. So it can be very, it can add up very quickly. <laughs> okay, next we've got, you've got all of my vices here. Uh, <laughs> probably ranch dressing. I have a salad, but I, yes. can, I can enjoy that salad because of the ranch dressing. Yeah, so whether it be ranch dressing, a creamy, other creamy dressing, vinaigrettes, fat-free, low fat dressing, most of them have a lot of hidden sources of sugar in it. Um, even for two tablespoons of dressing, which is a pretty small portion I'm size. Say not enough <laughs> not, for my salad. Yes, not always a whole lot. You can get two teaspoons of sugar in that small amount. So you, if you're eating a healthy salad, you're basically with your dressing just pouring on a couple teaspoons of sugar over top. Next up, spaghetti sauce. Spaghetti sauce, yes, pasta sauce, tomato sauce. Um, a lot of sugar can be added to that because it helps to counteract the acidity of the tomatoes. Um, so really got to read your labels with this one. Ideally, make your own sauce from canned tomatoes, um, but otherwise just read your ingredients label to find one with no added sugar. And we wrap things up. What do we have on the far end? The last one is soup. So canned soups can actually have a lot of added sugar. And that's not something you would normally think about coming from a savory item having sugar added in. So, um, and actually for a half cup serving of soup, again, some, some soups can contain about two teaspoons of sugar, in which case you're probably gonna have more soup than just a half a cup um, serving size. So again, it's something that can really add up very quickly um, over the course of your day where sugars are hidden in everyday food items. And the real importance for us to be able to recognize these extra sugars is the fact that they lead to disease that can really just, you know, wreak havoc on our lives. 
Yes, definitely. Heart disease is the leading cause of death in Americans in the U.S. So, and sugar is a big factor in that. So really wanting to try to limit where sugars are coming from in your everyday diet can help to um, not have as many early onset of chronic diseases and help keep you um, looking young, healthy, and full of energy as well. You know, but it's they're just so darn sneaky because it's yeah. not just when we read the labels, it's not just sugar, high not fructose sugar. corn syrup mm -hmm. that we're looking for, I sucrose. I mean, there's 61 different names. That is just yes. mind boggling to have to really dig through and understand just as much. And you made a, a fabulous point about making our own spaghetti sauce. Uh, not that I ever would. Yeah, it's really not We're that all hard. <laughs> yeah, it's just a matter of having the right ingredients kind of stashed in your pantry. Get some crushed tomatoes, add a little bit of a little bit of tomato paste, put some garlic, some onions, some spices in there. To give it a little added sweetness, I like to chop up some carrots or some red bell pepper um, and saute that with the onion before you add the tomatoes in. And that really helps to give counteract the acidity of the tomatoes, but without any added sugar. You're just getting sugar from natural food sources. And natural is the key. Natural is the key. The more whole natural foods, less processed, less added sugar you can get, the better off you will be and the healthier you will be in the long run. Kimberly Spatola with Novon Health. Thank you so much for these great information. And now I've got to be extra ca careful. I'm throwing out my granola. <laughs> I'm not even going to eat my yogurt anymore. And uh, maybe I'll learn how to make some uh, pasta sauce. Yes, definitely. Thanks so much for Thank your information. Thank you. Well, when you were a kid, what was your favorite summer memory? Maybe spending time with grandparents, visiting a theme park, or perhaps going to camp. Carolina's Healthcare Systems, Levine Children's Hospital, and Novant Health's Hemby Children's Hospital are the two major medical centers in our region treating kids with cancer. As Carolina Impact's Jeff Rivenbark explains, each summer, patients from both hospitals take part in a very special camp. Sarah Fruitt administers life-saving medications to adult patients at Levine Cancer Center. As an oncology nurse, she's able to encourage her patients in a unique way because she's also a cancer survivor. And a lot of the hope she gives patients stems from the hope she received as a little girl at Camp Care. On a hot summer morning, volunteers welcome nearly 200 campers carrying backpacks, pillows, and plastic bags filled with medicine. Parents sneak another hug, blow kisses, and cheer as the buses leave South Charlotte. Two hours later, they end up at Camp Care, which is perched on the side of a mountain overlooking Lake Lure. From screen printing and cooling off in the lake to eating food and singing, I'm gonna make a two -two. it looks like a regular summer camp, but it isn't. We have staff from both children's hospitals that work with these children on a frequent basis. They're able to be here and monitor them medically throughout the week, and it gives these kids a chance to experience something that they wouldn't get to do otherwise. In this cabin, girls of all ages have fun making tutus. 16-year-old Alexandra Shaney is facing her sixth relapse with cancer. I had to get radiation for it, and we're going to see if it's still there when I get back. Just being around others facing similar health struggles reminds Alexandria she's not alone. I really don't know anyone who is going through what I'm going through, so it's kind of nice to talk to people who have been there. Mary Cole is one of dozens of camp counselors who volunteer each year. I always tell people it's like my favorite week of the year. As a child, Mary had cancer, and coming here helped her forget about it, at least for a short time. That motivates me to do the same for the kids and the siblings who are going through the same thing that I went through. Camp Care is free of charge and funded completely by donations. The camp is for children with cancer and their siblings. It's hope for me and a lot of kids. Remember oncology nurse Sarah Fruent? This is her 17th year at Camp Care. As a kid, she was a camper for 11 years, and she's been a counselor for six years. Her battle with leukemia began when she was just two years old. I did chemo until I was about four, was in remission for about three and a half years, and then I relapsed when I was eight. Camp Care was the one place where Sarah says she fit in as a kid. When I was nine, I was in the middle of treatment here. I had bald head, um, skin and bones, everything, all the side effects of treatment going on. Other kids, they didn't look at you any differently, not like at school where they would stare and make comments under their breath. Everybody Sarah cared. beat cancer and today shares her story to help others. 
what camp care is for me is empathy. And, and I think that goes a long way. So, so for me, the value is immeasurable. David Hunt had a plastic anemia, a rare condition that occurs when the body stops producing enough new blood cells. But the camp helped him look beyond his medical condition. Camp care exposes you to this dynamic environment where you don't have to live into social expectations or cancer expectations. And I think that's so powerful for these children because when they experience that, even if for one week, year after year, they understand that they can go into life not defined by cancer, but more so defined by who they want to be. Every year, the campers pause briefly to remember the lives cut short by cancer. Some exchange hugs, shed tears, and write messages, while family members come back to remember the place that brought joy to their children. Executive Director Kerry Cuton says Camp Care accomplishes one thing. Plain and simple, it lets them be kids free of the hospital and the clinics and the infusions and the chemo. Everybody in their life has some experience with cancer, whether it's a friend, whether it's a sibling, whether it's a mother, father. It's different with kids who have cancer because their lives just stop in the middle of where they are. This is just the safe place, the place where you can have fun and have the best time, have the best week of summer. For kids who have experienced a lot of emotional ups and downs, Camp Care offers a lifetime of hope each year and just a week of adventure. For Carolina Impact, I'm Jeff Rivenbark reporting. Thanks, Jeff. Over Camp Care's 31-year history, the nonprofit has sent about 6,000 kids to summer camp at a cost of about $600 per camper. When you think about the world of fashion, what comes to mind? New York, Paris, Milan? Well, how about Charlotte? As Carolina Impact's Suzanne Stevens explains, a local man is taking on the fashion bullies, and he's doing it all right here. See all this glitz? It's conceived and created here in a small studio on Monroe Road in Charlotte. Luis Macacao is the designer, a native of Peru. He came to Charlotte years ago to visit a friend and he fell in love with the area. So where does he find inspiration? Everywhere. I like the buildings in downtown, for example. I like the geometry. I like the, uh, I like the architectural style. The is that translated into a gown? Oh, absolutely. He is particularly proud of this gown with its vibrant colors that remind him of Peru and its label. Oh, it does say Charlotte on your label. Yes, of course. Oh, I love that. This is the, the four places that I work. So in New York, these pictures were taken during Macacao's first show at Fashion Week in 2010, where he debuted his collection at the Waldorf Astoria. He did all the work in Charlotte, and it turned out to be his breakout season. And I've been doing collections everywhere, you know, every year, everywhere, but never in New York Fashion Week. So after the show, I went to the backstage and I started crying like a baby. I don't know what happened. One of the highlights of his career took place in his native country. For two years, he was the personal designer for the president and first lady of Peru. His latest project takes him to St. Lucia in the Eastern Caribbean. After presenting three runway collections there, Luis came up with a plan to introduce islanders to the world of fashion. Yeah, this island, everybody's so fashion conscious and they don't have a fashion school. So last year, I got the honor to meet the prime minister, Mr. Anthony. And we were talking about, you know, how can we help the island and stuff like that. And uh, we decided, okay, maybe I should write a syllabus to create a fashion school in the island. His two-year program starts next year at a local community college. He's also working on another project, a fragrance line for men and women. You will love it. You will totally love it. Yeah. Luis created this in Spain. He was the actual nose, as they are called, or the perfumer who creates the scent. Back in Charlotte, he stays busy designing clothing for local clients. He says the Charlotte look is classy and ladies tend to plan ahead. I have clients who call me in January and they gave me the whole uh, year of events. So I have to make designs, you know, doing drawings and everything and say, okay, in January, you're gonna be uh, this gay loud, this on the, you know, that event with these dresses and we plan the whole year. And some of the best dressed brides across the Piedmont wear Luis Macacao. He designed this gown for Heidi Castro. I told him my story and my dream and he said, I got you. Luis transformed her story into this dress, making her feel like a princess. 
I started crying. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. It was, it was just so emotional just to see myself like what I have dreamt for many, many, many years. Having worked in the fashion industry for so many years, Luis now uses his voice to remind the fashion world not to bully his models. She was a size six model and she was considered fat. Amaka Kao joined an organization called Fashion Against Bullying. At the end of his New York show last season, he walked up on stage to protest. When you consider all he's doing, it may leave you wondering, where does he get all his passion? I guess I'm running out of time. I just, yeah, I mean, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm in my late 40s, my early 50s, and uh, so I don't know how many more years I have left. So you need to, you need to leave something for the future generations. I said how lucky we are in Charlotte to have a you know, global international designer living here, just here. So I have good news and bad news. If you want a ready-to-wear piece right off the rack, you're going to have to go to a boutique in Paris or Barcelona. But if you want your own bespoke made-to-measure piece, he'll be happy to see you by appointment right here in Charlotte. Thanks so much, Suzanne. If you want one of these great designs, well, it'll set you back about $3,000 a piece. Well, we've got a link to the website on pbscharlotte.org. All you have to do is click on the Watch Local Shows tab and then click on Carolina Impact. Our next story is about a place that started more than 100 years ago with a simple idea to put smiles on people's faces. Little did Carmine Coletta know back then that he was laying the foundation for a family business that would span five generations. Carolina Impact's Jason Terzis heads to Gastonia to learn more about Tony's ice cream. What was once this, now looks like this. Delivery trucks which looked like this back in the day, now look like this. And ice cream makers that were like this in the early part of the 20th century are now high-tech, super-capacity ice cream producing machines. A lot has changed over the years at Tony's Ice Cream in Gastonia, but a lot has also remained exactly the same. That might explain why this place has been so popular with so many people for so many years. I think we've survived because we've always been so conscious of the quality of our product. Founded by Carmine Coletta in 1915, shortly after coming to America from Scotland, he first used horse-drawn wagons to sell his ice cream around town. By the 1930s, trucks replaced wagons, and in 1947, the current location on US Route 74 in Gastonia opened for business. When I think of Tony's Ice Cream, I think of that um, Art Deco yellow brick building on the big highway in downtown Gastonia, uh, a throwback to the era when there were not interstates, when everyone came in and out of town on that one main street. And if you wanted to catch people's attention in town or out of town, that's where you wanted to locate. With several Anthony's in the family tree, no one's quite sure who the Tony in Tony's Ice Cream is. But at one point, there were four Tony's locations open for business. And we have a fantastic customer base, you know, here in Gaston County. Louis Coletta is Carmine's grandson, the third generation at Tony's and the current owner. You'll always find him here. And I'm sure Grandpa would be proud. I'm sure he never envisioned any, any way that we would be in a situation like we are now. Also here is Lewis's daughter, Melinda, the fourth generation of the Coletta family at Tony's. I came here with my grandparents from the time I can rem That's my earliest memory. Melinda works the business side of Tony's. Her son, Aaron, the fifth generation, works next door where all the ice cream is made. It's rocky sometimes working with family, working with a whole, you know, it's a whole different dynamic, but yet you're working with people that love you and that you love, and that's, that's an honor. Tony's is about family, but that family also includes customers. When you see people over and over again, they pretty much become family. Every morning when I walk in, there are so many people that we know. We have so many regulars, and that makes me so happy and gives me a sense of obligation to them. This is a part of their history and their life. One of those lifelong customers is Charlotte's Nance Mackle. She's been coming to Tony's for 50 plus years. The best food, the best ice cream, and the best childhood memory. Today, she's meeting her sister for lunch. We came for the cheeseburgers and the milkshakes. Stopping at Tony's was always part of the trip when coming home from their grandparents' house in Rutherford County. It's fabulous. I've eaten ice cream all over every place I've ever visited, and this is the best ice cream ever. 
Using the same ice cream making techniques Carmine used a century ago, Tony's produces 1,200 gallons of ice cream a week. The chocolate chips and cookie dough get churned out, the sound of big machines buzz away, big tubs get filled, giant whisks twirl, and three gallon tubs get pressed with tops and bottoms. Then it all goes into the big freezer. They make 28 flavors here, including unique ones like grape and cherry. But it's not just the ice cream that lures customers in. Hot dogs and fried bologna sandwiches are two of the most popular food items on the menu. Gastonia was a, a working people's town. It was a textile mill town. Um, other folks as well, but that was its, its premier identity. And this restaurant uh, remembers uh, all those hardworking folk uh, who would take a bologna sandwich to the mill. and. Um, the, the grilled fried bologna sandwiches are part of who we are here in the Carolinas. Through 101 years and five generations, Tony's is as popular now as ever. Lewis attributes that to consistency, which started with grandfather Carmine. His theory was the product will sell itself if it's good enough. I mean, I certainly could sell this ice cream, I'm sure. You can find Tony's ice cream at local bylos and some restaurants across the state, but you won't see ads for Tony's because they've never advertised. It's all word of mouth. In Gaston County, Tony's ice cream has, we've earned our presence here. They've also resisted the temptation to grow bigger or to sell out to a larger company. We're a little tiny company you know, surrounded by giants. At 77, Lewis wants to spend more time fishing and at the beach. He says soon it'll be up to the next generation to keep the Tony's legacy alive. For Carolina Impact, I'm Jason Churches reporting. Thanks so much, Jason. Lewis says if he was just a little bit younger, he'd love to open another Tony's down in Myrtle Beach. Well, this month, we're giving away tickets to Charlotte Contemporary with artists from over 30 states happening October 14th through the 16th at the Park Expo. To enter, friend us on Facebook, look for this post, and in the comments section, tell us why you'd like to win free tickets. And don't forget, you can watch tonight's stories and past Carolina impacts at pbscharlotte.org. Well, thanks so much for joining us. We always appreciate your time and look forward to seeing you back here again next time on Carolina Impact. Good night, my friends. of PBS Charlotte.